Hello. We're on the second day now, and I'm uh, starting to prepare the cables that is going to go into the fuse box. These are the mains cable, main cables that is feeding everything inside. Just show you is something that's going to go from the main cable through the mesh ring and up to the distribution blocks and over again to the other set of distribution blocks and then again throughout the fuse box. Now, uh, what I'm now going to do, I'm going to put on is end caps. I'm not quite sure what it's called. I'm going to squeeze them so they are secure to the cable. Now I'm trimming off some of the excess cover because I was oh, unfortunate enough to take off a little bit more than I intended to. But yeah, should be good. Det er anlederne nå. Bare rett opp, rett inn og rett opp. Rart at derfor vil det jo kun gå på øversiden. Det er jo... Hvis jeg tar forbøy om det inn, så stopper den jo der. Gå inn der da, og så... So now I'm putting on a blue sleeve on one of the four faces for the end face. Because, because of some laws we have here in the European nation, we have to clearly distinguish the cables with colors. So for the neutral one it should be blue and for everything else it's black. Now I have to put on these socks, so to speak, on the ends of these uh, connections to cover up the copper part between the cable and the uh, connector.
Okay, so now I'm going to start to connect the cables from the main switch to the distribution block and then again from the distribution block over to the other sets of distribution blocks and then goes out to the rest of the circuit board. Okay, so now I connected the cable from the main switch to the distribution block to the current transformer. And the thing about the current transformer is that it's really important that you get it the right way around because you have an input on the bottom side on T1 and an output on T2. And if you get those mixed up, the power company that uses those to measure the amps used in the circuit will not get the correct measurements. So the neutral cable that I'm using here now is not... <coughs> because to explain it easily, measurements is taken between one phase and could be the neutral or one phase and another phase. But the neutral cable is just so they have the option to take 230 volts out of the, uh, the small ones, really. For these ones, you can take 400 volts using all three phases and uh, neutral. Okay, so we're just making uh, spacers here because uh, we need to have distance between all the phases. It's very important that uh, this one never that. Uh, the faces touch each other. So now I'm just going to continue to make spacers. It's just measure out the distance. Making more spacers.
All right, so I'm just going to remove the, there's a bit left over excess on the edges. So I'm just going to brush that down a little bit. And now it will sit completely flush with other than with the next one. It'll be no gaps. Okay, so now I'm uh, connecting the different distribution box to another with uh, EC cable going across. And I'm on the last one now. And when we're done with this, we'll uh, connect on the last remaining big switch before moving on to connecting up the all the switches in the other three three phases plus the end phase, neutral phase, that is. Now I'm connecting up the uh, final uh, large switch to the main power, so they have the option to connect it and use it when the client gets it. Okay, from the bottom here is incoming through this circuit breaker out on the top through these current transformers which measure the amps used in the whole fuse box up through the distribution block connected to the other set which then will go out to the next uh, the other part of the fuse box and then again from the other underside of this these distribution blocks goes down uh, secured here to keep it away from the transformer because it uh, has to be three centimeters apart. Then it goes down to the underside of this circuit breaker that then again will go out into the field. So now I'm going to connect from this uh, rail underneath from the neutral face here through and under and over under here.
Okay, so now I have uh, connected uh, two, tw two sets of 25 on the underneath of this uh, distribution box, as seen in this uh, fuse part of the fuse box. And they go in and underneath and into the other part, connected to uh, four sets of uh, 32 amps fuses here, and four sets of 32 amps here. So now those 25s are connected to four sets of uh, 32 amps fuses in two places. So now I'm uh, tightening the torque to two and a half uh, newton on each and every one of the connection points that the 25 is connected to to finish off before I start moving on to the 16. Uh, the reason I'm doing it now is because the 16 will come in front of these hexagonal screws, so I won't have access to them at a later point. So uh, what I'm going to do next is connect everything with uh, 16 millimeters. From here, I'm going to use a total of five, I think. Five points on in each uh, distribution block, which is then going to feed everything that is still not fed in here. Måler jeg? Nei, eller trafor? Eh, er det sånn her? Ja, det er på kål. Så nå har jeg startet connecting the fuses opp til the exit point of each fuse for easier connection for the electrician. And this is a really repetitive process process that I'm going to repeat for each and every single fuse with different sizes depending on the size of the fuse. So for example, for as for the 63 amp fuse now, we use the 16, the same as what is underneath. When we go down to 32 amps, we're going down to 6 millimeters. Now I'm about to finish up the 6mm cables for the 32 amp uh, fuses. When I'm done with that, I'm going to continue on with the smaller ones here, which is 2.5mm. Uh, where we have uh, six, 6 of them is 4-phase, uh, and uh, the rest of them is 1 plus N. So now that we're done with the wiring, I'll take you through where everything we've done so far with all, the, all of the wiring. So from this main uh, main breaker, we go through through the measuring to the distribution block, over to the other distribution block, and out from underneath of this one into the other uh, part of the fuse box. And here in the fuse box, we started out with uh, yeah feeding everything with power, and then going out from the top side, starting with the biggest up to the top, where the electrician will come and uh, plug himself in. Then we went from the biggest to the small, small one, 16 to 6 millimeter. And from the 6 millimeter to the 2.5 millimeters. All the way through, where we finally ended off. Now that that is done, I will start tightening with the 2.5 newton of torque.
saving this to last is because I can do everything at once. So I know that I don't have to go back and think through if I've already done something. I can do everything at once and mark off that I have done it from a list. Hello, I'm Joachim and Sondre is finished uh, building the panel and I'm going to go and uh, verify. Now we're going to take the isolation test. We run uh, 500 volts DC to check that there are no um, uh, terminals too close together for the virus to, uh, for the voltage to jump and uh, no misconnections. So. That's the bad sound. I take. Yeah, we get the reading because of the over surge voltage. It uh, leads everything to ground. There we get the correct results. This is the most important test because this is the one that uh, tells us it's okay to put uh, voltage on the panel without uh, any damage. Yeah, that's good. So this is uh, our test cable, 400 volts. We have both uh, 400 and 230 in Norway. But this is the new standard, and it's the same for basically the entire world. So I'm using uh, this uh, connection here because it's directly to the main breaker. Making sure to put neutral on the right side, or else we might damage equipment. So I verify that blue and blue are on the same side. So, I take the pinch test so that no wires can come loose while I'm standing here. Uh, Sandra, can you put in the power? Then I have to put on a sign. <laughs> so everyone knows it's voltage on the panel. Okay, we have power. So now I'm going to test uh, the... Um, ground fault uh, breakers it's just uh, by the test button I yeah, want one defect so that one has to be replaced and 
then I'm gonna measure voltage on the intake because we have bypassed the main breaker and gone directly above. So I have to verify that we have voltage on the downside here. So we don't have any problems uh, with the customers. Turn it to 30, to 30, 400, 400, and 400. That's good. So now we have power, and we're gonna check all the ground, ground fault breakers. measure voltage on the main breaker so this is because we have uh, for the test purposes wired us in front of this one on the upper side so I have to test the bottom side so should that 230 400. Yeah. Good. Then we're finished because we don't have any control uh, like contactors or relays or uh, programmable uh, time switches or anything. So that's the test. So now that uh, jo Joachim is done with all of the testing, I have a few comments that need to be addressed, which I have already done. As seen here, one of the comments re remar reminded me that I have to put on a label to indicate that there are some uh, current tra transformers behind. Also, I have covers here now, marked with each of the faces, so the electrician know where, knows where to plug in. And now the final step after the, everything is done is that I need to take pictures for uh, per our own personal documentation. Hello, my name is Sondre, and I want to thank you for spending time with us as we were building this panel, which is now done and ready to be shipped to the customer. <laughs>